Hello, this is Robert, and in this video I would like to demonstrate how cn.get, cn.peak, and cn.putback work. I've set up this little demonstration inside of a graphics program so that I can represent what's going on graphically. So, um, I've set up a stream buffer here, and this is controlled by the operating system. And so when the user types letters on the keyboard, the operating system keeps track of which letters are typed using a stream buffer. And you can see that the, that the characters are filled in from left to right in this example. And um, so let's say that the uh, user types A first, so that would be stored right there, and then they type a B and then they type a C on the keyboard and then let's say they type return. Okay, so when our program starts up, let's say that these are the first few statements in our program. So we set aside memory for CH1, which is a char. There it is right there. Then we set aside memory for another char called CH2 and there it is right there. So when we reach this first C and dot get statement, um, that will remove the first character from the buffer and store it at memory location CH1. So the A goes from the buffer into CH1. And then what happens is the next character to be read moves over to the next byte right there. So when we have the next statement, cn.get CH2, B will be read from the buffer and stored into CH2. And then the pointer for the stream buffer, the next item to be read, will move over to C. If this is the end of our program, then the three will be thrown, the C will be thrown out. Otherwise, if there was another cn.get statement in our program, then the C would be read. Okay, so it's stored for further input regardless. Um, and if the program terminates, then it's thrown away. Okay, so let's reset our program so that the user we has typed A first and then B second and then C. So the first thing to be read will be A. But let's change our program and we're not going to be using just simply get anymore. Let's use a combination of several um, statements. Okay, so we still set aside CH1 and CH2 right there, but the first statement to be executed is cn.peak. Okay, so peak is very similar to get, except that it will not move the pointer over to read the next item. Remember that that's what we did with get. With peak, we still will read the, the character from the buffer into CH1. And so we'll grab the A, but this time it's not removed from the stream buffer. So we did make a copy of the A to store it in CH1, but we didn't move over to, move, to read the B next. Okay, so with peak, we are still going to read the memory from the buffer. So the A went from the buffer up to CH1, but then the pointer stayed at A. So A was not removed from the buffer, and it will be the next thing to be read. Incidentally, notice that cn.peak uses a different style. With get, we have the character to be read inside of the parentheses right there. With peak, we can't do that. With peak, we have to use an assignment statement and actually store it to the left side of that assignment statement. You're not allowed to put any characters inside of the parentheses with peak. You'll get a syntax error. Okay, now that we have peaked and we've uh, loaded the first character into CH1, now we will move on to the next statement right here. And so cn.get ch2. 
Well, the pointer is pointing at A right there, so the A will move into CH2. And then the pointer will move over to read B, right? Because that's how get, that's how get works. It moves the pointer over to read the next thing. All right. Put back is sort of the opposite of get. And I've just placed a D in here just because it was something different. Um, I could put back CH1 and then that would place an A back in the buffer because that's what CH1 contains. But you're not limited to the thing that you just read. So I just wanted to make that point. I could put back CH2, which would also put back the A, but you can put back into the stream buffer anything you want. So let's go ahead and put back the letter D. So since put back works the same way as get only in reverse the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move the pointer back over to the first location in the stream buffer or the previous location in the stream buffer and then what we'll do is we will place a D right there in the, in the stream buffer so we put back a D so that's how put back works it's the opposite of get Remember that get will remove the character from the stream and then move the pointer over. Well, put back is the opposite. So we move the pointer back over to the previous location and then we store whatever single character we want in that location. And then and in this example, I'm just putting back a D. So the next statement after put back is C and dot get CH2. All right. Well, we grab the D and we place that into CH2. Uh, CH2 contained an A, but since we're placing a D there, the A gets clobbered. And so the D is overwritten, or the A is overwritten with D. And then we move the pointer over and B will be the next thing read. If there is another get statement or some other statement that reads from the buffer there isn't, uh, let's just pretend that the program terminates after this statement, then the B and the C will get thrown away. Okay, I hope that was um, a good graphical representation of how get, peak, and putback work.